dark on the inner square. And then they have this odd arrangement with sliders and the gray and white and small circle. And it does make changes, but no one I know who works with Kasabi has ever actually figured out in any consistent way what it does. And here is the low down again. Uh, no background image import, no layers, 35 presets, five effects, uh, nine undos and redos, no eraser, pinch to zoom, no eyedropper, and small resolution. Okay, next we have type drawing. This is one of my absolute favorite uh, drawing apps. It allows you to draw with type. You can set the typeface, you can set the phrase, you can have it pick uh, random typefaces for you. You can have it change the size with your speed of strokes so that you get larger type when you uh, make a fast movement and very small fine type when you make a small stroke. Um, it also has a great feature where you can select not only the color for your type, but a range of colors. So you can say, okay, I want a bunch of yellows in this range, and I want them to be all very light or range from light to dark. Um, so you get immediately a texture within a certain area of color without having to keep going back and select another color. So the unique features, draw with type and multiple typefaces. Select specific values or ranges for color, saturation, and brightness. Choose what words, phrases, or punctuation symbols you want to draw with. Choose specific sizes of type or have size vary with the speed of your stroke. Uh, type drawing gotchas. The original version was only black and white. The next version was still pretty low res. The most recent version of this app fixed the only issue I had. The type is now super sharp and the ex export resolution is high. And uh, here are the uh, sliders, the, the color pickers. So on the left, it's a variation on the ones we see a lot. And on the right, you can see where you can pick a range for the hue, a range for the saturation, and a range for the brightness. There's no range for opacity. I don't know what the technical issue around that was, but you basically select a single opacity. And here are the uh, details of the developer's Hansel Hu. And by the way, one of those portraits I showed you at the beginning was of the developer, which I thought was kind of fun. Uh, there is an eyedropper. There is a standard zoom. There is undo. Uh, there is no eraser. Right, I guess so. Magic Brushes by the same developer basically allows you to sample from any photo or image or picture that you take with your camera. It has a variety of ways for you to cut out and make transparent and draw lines through and get the shape exactly right of the brush that you create. Um, he has leveraged some of the technology that he used in the type drawing program. So for instance, in the drawing of the green guy, you can see I have one brush. And as I drew the curve, the shape of the brush moved along the curve, just as you would expect type to move. And that's an option that you can have to either have a brush stay in the same direction or to have it follow the shape of what you're drawing. Uh, the uh, middle image was made by Valerie. She took a sample, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was of a bicycle tire to make the snake, and then superimposed it on a photograph in the background. And then the Christmas image is actually made entirely with Christmas clip art. So the white fur of the hat, for instance, is Santa faces, and the skin color is reindeer, and it's Christmas balls for the top of the hat. So. The unique features again, in addition, oh, I should say it also comes with a very good set of standard brushes. Um, you can also make your own brushes from any object, texture, color, or shape. If you import pings, you can import them as brushes that maintain their transparency and you don't have to do any further editing. Once you have created your brush, you have control for changing size, rotation, transparency, and color as needed. And you have an option for letting the brush stay oriented to the stroke as you would to write type along the line or draw first standing up on a cat's back. What are the gotchas? There is no easy way to move brushes between devices yet, so you can't share your brushes with others or even with yourself if you get a new device, as I recently did. And when you change the color of a multicolored brush, it doesn't stay multicolored. Instead, it's as if it were converted to grayscale and then a tint applied. And here's the color picker again, a uh, fairly standard variation. Um, we're not seeing the transparency slider, but uh, you have your saturation, light, and dark. So there is an opacity slider, there is a brushes slider, there are 10 built-in brushes and infinite that you can create yourself. 
pinch to zoom, no eyedropper. Uh, highest resolution file is only 320 by 480. Okay, next up we have Quill. I was very excited to see the um, app that Steve is coming out with for us as a vector drawing program. At the moment, my favorite vector drawing program is Quill. It allows you to draw with shapes. Um, it, ha it allows you to export as SVG, so you can go straight into Illustrator. Um, you can set separate colors for the line and the fill shape, or have either of them be no fill or no color. You can resize, move, change the color of either the line or the fill at any time by selecting objects. So everything you draw is a shape in its own layer. There's no way to actually group shapes into one layer to do stuff with them. Um, at any time you can move, resize, or rotate. At any line you, time you can change the line thickness, the line color, transparency, and or fill color and transparency, or set either line or fill to none. At any time you can push any shape up or down in the layer hierarchy. What are the dots as well? It does not have those Bezier curve handles, so you can't alter the actual shape once you've drawn it. Uh, this has never bothered me. If I don't draw the shape I want, I just undo and try drawing it again. You have to change modes between draw, zoom, and edit existing shapes. It's not a pinch to zoom, so that's a little bit just gets in the way. You can't group shapes together. And uh, here are some of the other uh, vector programs I've worked with, Adobe Ideas, Intaglio Sketchpad, MiniDraw, Paintbook, and of course, uh, Inkpad now coming from Steve. Here is the Quill Color Picker. Um, it's pretty much the same. You can see that one of these is for the stroke and one is for the fill. And the slider on the bottom lets you go from either a grid of larger and larger shapes that you know you'll be able to get back to or a full spectrum um, on the other side. This is definitely not my favorite color picker. It's not how I think of color, uh, although it does allow a lot of color in one grid, I suppose. Um, on the far right, we can see the opacity slider. Um, you can't see it here, but if you click on the new uh, area where the new color is selected, you'll also have options for copying colors or pasting colors. So if there's a color on another object that you have, there's no eyedropper, but you can select that object, copy the color, and then paste it in to do another one. Um, I should also say that I was playing with it this morning. I have an original iPod Touch, and I have a new iPod Touch running iOS 4, and it was a little bit buggy on the iPod Touch running the new one. So I suggest saving before selecting to change colors or rotate objects. Uh, there are two different brushes. There is a slider for size. There's a slider for opacity. There is undo, redo, no replay. Eraser is not really applicable. You can erase, get rid of any object at any time. OK. Here's Kids Paint. I love this program. I don't know of anyone else using it to make quote unquote serious art. Um, the idea with this program is every time you lift your finger and put it down again, a random color and line size is selected for you. So you never know what you're going to get. And how I work with it is I draw, I start to draw, I make a little line, I see what color I've got. If I don't like it, I lift my finger and put it down to select another one. And then when I get something I like, I draw with it. Uh, that sounds like a pain in the neck, so what's the advantage? The advantage is the whole time I'm looking at and thinking about my drawing, and I can get a lot of richness of color without going to menus and uh, eyedroppers and color wheels. And at the moment that I'm selecting a color from a color wheel, I don't actually have the thing I'm drawing in front of me. So this way, I always see what I'm drawing at the time that I'm making the decision about the color. It's random, but that's what it is. So the unique features, color and line thickness, change randomly with every stroke. You can get a lot of color on the canvas without having to go to menus. And the gotchas. You have no way to control or know what color is coming next. If you accidentally touch the screen in two places at once, it will draw a line between the two points, which cannot be undone. <laughs> also consider, for lots of uncontrolled color, color tilt. Now, for some people, I'll wish that might be a feature. So if you want to draw a straight line, you can click once, and then with your second finger, you get a straight line. Uh, and here is the uh, low down on kids paint. No eyedropper, no zoom, no undo, no redo, no, 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 no. <coughs> Just does this one thing and it's kind of fun. Okay, color tilt. Um, the trick with color tilt is you actually select color, you have more control of it, but you select it by tilting your device. 
So instead of going to a color wheel to pick the color, and again, having to lose the image that you're looking at, you tilt and it shows you kind of in the border area what color you're getting. Um, so you tilt your device to change colors while you're drawing. You get different colors depending on the direction of the tilt, and it's not random. It is something that you could learn. You wiggle a little bit to get a similar color, tilt in a completely different direction for a completely different color. And again, this allows you to get a great richness of colors in your drawing without having to stop drawing for each color change. Well, what are the gotchas? Of course, it is hard to control the tilt. There's only one type of hard edge brush. The interface for save, etc., can be somewhat confusing. Also consider color touch and kids paint. And here are the, uh, and this is the startup screen for the app also, so it basically shows you where all the colors are and which direction to tilt in to get which colors. Uh, they also have a mode you can go into where with sliders you can select a specific color. But frankly, it's not such a great drawing program if that's what you want to do. There's many drawing programs that do that better. So really, this is for the fun of the tilt and draw. And what have we got? No eyedropper, no zoom, no undo, redo, no replay. There is an eraser, an opacity <coughs> slider, brush size slider, one hard edge, pencil brush, millions of colors, and no layers. Next up, we have the Doodle Buddy. Um, I like Doodle Buddy for two reasons. Uh, number one, the thing that the app is special for is that it allows you to draw over Wi-Fi in the same picture with somebody else. Um, and I also think that it makes a really excellent chalk mark. I say on one of the slides here that it's the best chalk mark that's out there, but actually uh, one of the new brushes, brushes in the last version, I think also makes a pretty good chalky mark. So, the unique features. Two people can draw together over Wi-Fi. It's a very good chalk pastel. There's also a nice smear tool and some amusing stamps, like eyeballs and things. What are the gotchas? Well, it comes with a limited 24 color swatch palette, but it has a whole system where you can earn points and get a color picker. And I didn't actually have to spend any money to do that. I just had to download an app use it once and then throw it out and I got the color picker so if you're willing to do that kind of stuff you can get it. The final image quality is not very good, not just resolution but a lack of clarity to the marks. For drawing together you can also consider whiteboard though they have very limited colors and they're all pastel -y. So this is the Doodle Buddy color pickers. Um, the one with the swatches, those are the colors you get and for my taste it's actually a pretty nice set of vivid colors. And if you go through the shenanigans, you can get the full color color picker on the other side. So here's the uh, Doodle Buddy lowdown. No eyedropper, no zoom. Uh, there is undo, redo, and eraser. No opacity. A size slider for the brush, and you can draw with your friends. Okay, sketchy. Um, this is a, another very simple, uh, just makes this one kind of mark. I think they think of it as ink. I think of it as kind of a thick charcoal. Tim might recognize himself up there. Uh, Grimovich would recognize himself up there too, except it's not in the room. Um, let's see. So what are the unique features? You vary line thickness with speed. It's meant to be inky. I think it's kind of like charcoal. The background is a nice slight cream instead of white works very well to create a layer that can be colorized with another image from another image using DXP, which Valerie will be discussing. What are the gotchas? Only three levels of undo, no redo at all. No zoom, name is unpronounceable. Also consider fountain pen, Zen brush, and Eastern drawing. And here are the details. Okay, Zen brush, this is a relatively new app and one that I'm really, really loving for just doing quick sketches. Um, it's sort of like a Sumi ink on paper. Um, there's like three, so three uh, opacities and four levels of size and an eraser, and that's it. You can select from a number of background papers um, and draw. So it makes beautiful, flowing, Sumi-style brush marks. Line thickness and coverage vary with the speed of the stroke, so it's not just whether you get thick or thin, but that feeling of the ink kind of skittering across the paper. It's great for quick sketches, practicing calligraphy and Asian effects, uh, clean and simple interface, and it actually has a very nice uh, clear delete image transition, which is very fun to look at. Sometimes I just draw circles and delete, draw circles and delete. Uh, what are the gotchas? There's only one level of undo, redo, and no zoom. You can't make the menu go away, though you can draw behind it. 
The trash can is poorly placed. It's easy to delete your drawing accidentally. However, you can hit undo to get your drawing back. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, also consider Eastern drawing and fountain pen, which are similar in having Asian papers for the background and the feeling of ink and paper, but they're more like working with an, uh, an ink pen than an ink brush. And here's the lowdown, and we're just going to plug on ahead. Okay, colors. Uh, I have a fondness for colors because it was actually one of the first apps out on the market. Um, I believe it, it got out before brushes did because it was basically a port from uh, another device that used a stylus. Uh, the thing that I still keep it around for is that you can change line thickness with tilt. So this means I can go from thick to thin without having to speed up my stroke and lose control. On the other hand, of course, it's also hard to control tilt, so it takes some getting used to. So, unique features. There are options to change the brush size or opacity with tilt. You set the tilt direction and amount. So basically, you go into a menu and tilt it and tell it what you want the begin and end point to be. This allows you to draw with lines that flow in one stroke from thick to thin or opaque to transparent without changing the speed of your stroke. <coughs> what are the gotchas? It can be tricky to figure it out. And when you're not using the tilt feature, you may feel limited by only two brush types, no layers, etc. Uh, here's the color picker. Again, we have you pick the hue in the outer ring, fully saturated in one corner, and then white, black, and gray in the middle. Here's the lowdown, um, opacity slider, brush sizes, brush size. Oh, there's an odd thing where brush size does not scale right with zoom. That sort of takes getting used to. There's only two types of brushes, millions of colors, no layers. Uh, it does have an eyedropper. It has a pretty good resolution, and it does have a built-in playback uh, feature. And that was my speedy review of 11 apps, and on to Valerie. Yeah, right. Well, I expect I haven't got it quite in focus, so can I move yeah, please. on a bit? Yeah, please. <laughs> well, most of Julia's were concerned with making a mark like a pencil. I have quite a few which are more like editing things. And I'm starting off with double DXP, which is double exposure. And it, the big thing about that is that it gives you a list of blending modes, which is almost as good as the uh, range in Photoshop. Um, you've got, um, well, they're shown at the top there. You've got 18 different composite settings. And um, there are technical explanations in each one, but I like to try them, and it's very absorbing pastime to take a picture and, and try all the blending modes one by one, and you get some you discard and some you like. Here's, here's my... Um, a dodo bird, which is a photo, and um, you can get all different kinds of effects. This is taken from a drawing, and an um, old pen and ink drawing, um, combined with a photo of a sunset, and again, you can get very different results, and it's a huge lot of fun. Um, now, you can choose, you've got two pictures that you're combining, and you can choose to combine the size and format of the bottom or the top layer. So, you know, the bottom or the top. And um, so here we have um, a couple which are both the same. And I've combined it with the middle one. Oh, sorry, I mean, the first one is different from the second. And um, it's combined the second smaller image with the larger lower image. So, um, here you, you, you can get a mismatch, but sometimes it can have interesting results. In this one, I had a, um, a landscape photo taken at night in a snowstorm and a, an upright picture of a wave, and it combined it uh, with, the, with the lower, and, and so it widened the arch. This is, oh, you have a mask, you can do a mask, and you prepare your mask in advance to, to control the blending. And here it's distorted the mask and made it wide. But on the on the right side, you see that the the mask, the format of the mask was upright, and so it uh, it blended without distorting. So that's DXP. Um, 
And here we have a, a similar, which is again combining images, but it does it in a different way. And I chose this rabbit because um, it reminded me of um, who framed Roger Rabbit, which was one of the first uh, cartoon plus live image things. And it seems to me that uh, with this, you could so easily combine photos and drawings in a very free way. So the first one is um, you've got, um, shows you the, the um, format, and you've got um, at the top, you see you've got four different ways you can um, alter your mask. And um, you can actually add any number of top images, and you can um, erase and unerase the, the top image. You can uh, shape it, move it, tilt it, etc. And a very useful thing of that is that you can um, unerase, which is different from undo. You, if you erased a bit, say you erased a rabbit's ear, you could get it back again just by painting with unerase. So there you have Roger Rabbit. And um, it's useful because it's a handy double tap to get to get to toggle a lot of the things, the, the mask mode and um, zoom and move. Um, tell them, uh, two, or two, if you tap with two fingers, you can fit both of the pictures exactly as a screen so that you can combine two versions of the same image. For instance, if you've got a different light level, both you can combine. And um, another useful thing is that uh, when you zoom in, it doesn't always happen in all that, but you can the brush size automatically reduces as you as you um, enlarge the picture and you get so that you can work on detail without, without having to adjust your brush size with a slider. So um, here we have uh, examples. Um, you combine, uh, you can, you know, did this it was um, the, the pictures I was combining I had already done with different apps and. Uh, the first one is a, is a sketch of a bit of a pigeon in the garden, and I combine it with a photo that I took, and all sorts of things. Anyway, again, it's a lot of fun. And um, so that's just, oh, here is Julia, has actually um, combined, um, how many is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight different images to make the center one. And um, so she, she's done, uh, can use a lot of images to put them all on top of one another, and um, you could get all sorts of interesting results. So now we have FX Photo Studio. Now this is a really a photo editing, but it's, um, it's one of my favourites. I use it a lot. It has some rather tacky um, effects that it adds, but um, you know, like uh, well, anyway. Um, but it also has some very good. In fact, some of them are so good that I, I personally only use them. I can see the um, pair there, which is burnt paper. And I like it so much. I use it for everything, and um, people will get to know it. And, um, you know, it gets corny, and so it's no, no, not much use anymore. But you've got 140 effects to choose from. And in fact, at one time, I tried to imitate the, the effect, you know, the scrolls and things, and it, it's actually pretty difficult to get the same kind of effects. And so, again, it's a lot of fun uh, running your picture through all the different effects, and you choose which one is most effective. And um, you can, in fact, you can use one effect, or you can build up, leave the first effect in place. Like here, it was a sketch I uh, sort of doodle I did of a novice Deborah, and um, the watercolor see the wrinkles in the paper. And, and then I, I did it um, with the rust effect, and then I, um, I did it with reverse color, so that um, you see you could get all sorts of interesting effects by building up the effect one after the other. And um, here's another example. Um, it was one I did in Jackson Pollock, sort of scribbles, and then I Actually, I, I saw that the middle thing was a blob that looked like a face, so I outlined it in brushes. 
And then I uh, ran it through Photo Studio, and again, you see that I have regrettably used the burnt paper effect. So um, that was um, another image that I did. Um, and here again, that was a photo I took um, in Bath, it's uh, the head of Zeus. And um, you can, in fact, do a few other things. You can crop your, your images. And the useful thing is that when it crops, it will post up the pixel size of the crop image. So that's actually quite handy. And here I, I cropped it so that I lost the side bits. And, um, and there I, again, and you can see the outline. I think I used the birth paper even on that. Then I put another couple of things on top of it. So anyway, that's that. And uh, now we have strip design. But this again is a very versatile um, program. This is useful, um, well, it is useful for anybody who does cartoons or, you know, graphic novels or anything of that sort. You've got a huge choice. Or if you like, you could use it with just one frame in a one image. But um, you start off by choosing a template and you've got five different um, varieties of templates. And then you choose the number of panels you want for the story you want to tell with your strip cartoon. And um, there are 40 different layouts. And um, at any point, you can uh, choose the, um, you can alter the, the background and borders of the, the template. And um, if you don't like the template you've chosen, you're not stuck with it. If you may sort of throw all your images into a bit of disarray, you can rearrange them and you can change your template, you know, midstream. Now here it may look complicated at first, but um, when you get used to it, you realise that it's very versatile. Um, and um, you, you can put in your image and um, you move it with one finger or pinch scale and zoom it with two in fingers. And um, if you want to move things around without um, without them slipping around, you know, you just press the um, hand zoom button and it will freeze the content so that you can move around in a few minutes. And um, as for, for a cartoon uh, strip, it will add speech levels, pre-made pre stickers, which I call R stickers, and um, then cutouts you can make yourself, so that you can add these to your image. And um, when you add, for instance, a speech bubble, you'll see in the illustration it's got the little green marks. You can, um, if they're editing handles, you can size it, tilt it, and, and etc. And you also can choose, not only can you choose the format, uh, the font, text, color, fill, and border alignment of your speech bubble, bubble. you can even uh, install different typefaces off the internet, and it tells you how to do that. So it's very versatile. And um, here we have cutouts and the stickers, which I was talking about. You can uh, get a, a cartoon that you did, and, and, and um, you can edit it, you can crop it and um, paint a mask around it. For instance, this mouse, I, uh, I, I, I painted around it so that you just got the mouse, and then I, I combined it with an image of a tree that I'd done. Oh, and you can also, you see in the center, you can add another panel, so even if you got fed up with all, all the 40 different varieties of, um, of uh, format, you can, you can add another panel to which you can add pictures or text. So, and then uh, the, on the far left, you have the uh, stickers, which are supplied, and they say things like, ouch, and wow, and um, oh, and you know, all that. And um, here we have, um, for example, you can, you can actually apply filters to the images that you have um, introduced. And here we have my purple owl, um, and he has got pink. And um, it, that's a filter. There's um, the, the, the list of filters in the middle, in the levels, RGB, brightness, contrast, etc. And then also you can apply grayscale and half tone. And on the right, you see uh, a cartoon I'm drawing I did. 
put into, converted the top sketch with it into a grayscale and heart. So it's very versatile and actually very handy if you want to do so. Now the next one is uh, phototropodelic, which is, um, it, it supplies, it applies a 60s style psychedelic uh, effects to an image. And um, on the left you see a, an image I did. I think it was in the style of Frida Kahlo, yes. And I, I did the psychedelic effect too. And um, here you have the, the, the main screen. Actually, the, the, the image on the right is a, a photo of a sunset. And um, in a minute, I'll, I'll show you the options you have. Yes, you can. You want to. Um, this is. I think it's my grandfather actually. This black and white old photo. You can add add. Um, uh, colours to it. And here you have in the middle of all the menu you've got the amount of detail you want. And on the left you see an example where the line width is outlined. The, the, the colours are outlined and you get this sort of jigsaw effect. And on the right you see that there is no line width and so you have the colours sort of emerging. And um, you can choose whether if you have a colored image, you may like to keep the colors of your original image, or you can add the psychedelic counter colors. And you can add up to 20, you can choose the number of colors you add, up to 22. So um, on the right, you've got the color level. And um, here again, there's more example of the, the, the choices in the, in the grids here. The, the one on the left has, <coughs> excuse me, only six colors. And then the one on on the right, you notice that the rays have been not added and the circles have not been added, but there's more detail in it. So again, you have quite a choice of uh, things to, um, to add. Now next we have one which is um, partly editing, but you can paint in it. Uh, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. I have. For your convenience, I have um, created um, examples of the various brushes and tools in, you know, in the results they achieve. One of my favorites, actually, is the scalpel, which gives sort of like nice, hairy sort of lines. And anyway, this is at the bottom, you see your choice here. And um, you can either, um, it with just two things, it will clone an image. Um, which I'll show you in a minute, or it will, um, you can paint with it. But I have to say that on the iPhone, and Julia sells me also on her iPod, it is slow and it's more or less unusable. I think it's okay. I think it's iPhone 4. I've got the latest, I think it was okay on her, I don't know. Anyway, it's okay on the iPad. But, um, so uh, if you're cloning an artist, touch, it's very useful for that. The only problem is that um, it will give you a, a, a blue outline drawing of, of your photo and, and then you paint on top of it with the tool you've chosen. But the paint obscures the blue outline. So a tip is to have a print um, in view of uh, your original uh, which allows you to model if it was just purely automatic uh, the, the brush strokes would apply themselves, you know, sort of regularly. But if you are looking at your original, for instance, the ducks, you can you can model the shape of the duck with your pen strokes, and you can get a much more lively, lifelike, personal-made effect. Um, and here we have. Um, oh, there are two gotchas on this one. First is that it doesn't do. Um, well, apart from not working on the iPhone, I thought. But it, it, does, it won't do an automatic sideways. You have to have you know, landscape. And also, you can paint. You can either choose to color, to color with the colors of the original or freehand hand painting. But it gives you the color picker is, is a disaster, I think. It uh, gives you some fancy names, which are rather unnecessary. And you have to scroll down and down to get to the color you want. And it, it's a long, long list of colors. 
you know, it's not really very useful. But anyway, this is one that I did. I cloned an old photo, and actually I ran this one through one FX. And um, so that's, uh, that was done in Artist Touch. Um, and here we have Adobe Idea, which is a sort of some graphic designers seem to like it. I was reading comments on the, on the iTunes website. And um, to me, I, it's not my kind of thing, but um, the, on your left you see a, a, an oil painting I did on a bit of cardboard of an orange. And on the left, I, 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 I sort of trace this in, in um, ideas. And you see that on the left of the orange, at the top, you can see I've got the water you can make the big. But it, it, it smooths things out such that you can't adjust the amount it smooths and it makes everything look as though it's made of plastic. And I don't like that much, but everybody has their own taste. And uh, here you have, um, you have 50 levels of undo. This is your menu on the left. It's quite simple, but it is handy. And, um, and you have, um, I'll come to them in a minute, but you have a five color palette or you can get a, a range of, of, you know, your tones and the spectrum there. And um, one of its disadvantages that is that um, it, it doesn't save to the iPhone or iPad gallery. You have to email it. You email it to yourself. Um, and uh, it will email it in two layers. Uh, <coughs> anyway, here is, is uh, one. I, I, you, can, you can add your background picture and then um, you know, draw your picture on top. You have a slider on the left, which is either blush, brush size, or opacity. And only saves by email. Um, but it will, um, the, the big advantage for illustrators is that it will transfer straight into Illustrator. So that, that they find handy. And uh, in, in Illustrator, it will, um, uh, the background will still be raster, but the, there's an editable vector image. But if you, um, if you open it in Photoshop, it's just a one layer raster picture. It's not, it's lost its vector. And so um, that's, um, and then a um, uh, very crude sketch. But it, some people find this handy. You can grab um, a five-color palette from any picture you've got and save it. So you've got a, a palette, you know, from another picture that you buy in, 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 to, uh, to another uh, image, which you may like. Next, we have drawing pad, which is um, I put it in because it's it's wonderful to use. It, it's it's uh, so luscious and uh, lovely, you know. And I can never resist art shops, you know, when I get all these lovely rainbows of color, you know. And then it's uh, children love it, uh, but it, it it's such fun to work with. But you do have, I mean, it's like in real life. You have colored pencil. Well, you have brushes, pencil. Uh, crayons and markers, and um, but the colours are confined to the to the tool they're, they're in. Like in real life, you have a red pencil or a green pencil, you know. Uh, and the brush is the same. You have two thicknesses of brushes, thick or thin, you know. But it is a joy to use. It's so luscious and lovely. And um, here I've just uh, done a thing uh, with. You can erase around. Or you can. You can add your own background, which is useful. Um, you, you can add any image you like as a background. And in fact, I, I find it useful to take pictures of, you know, folk like that wall. And, and I, I have a sort of library of effects that I use as backgrounds, which is handy. Um, and here we have, a, a, I've just done um, the little flowers to say the transparency of the various um, the tools, you know. Paints are slightly transparent. And markers are quite opaque and overlay the underlying color. Crayons are a bit dense, but they're open work. And colored pencils are more open work. And, and you can darken the effect by superimposing a stroke. And then it, 
eraser again, you've got a range of erasers, but they just like you see in the picture, you know. Um, and here you, you have, well, at the supply pictures, and as I was saying about backgrounds and textures, you can make your own. And you can load your own um, image in the background. Here I have, and, um, and I here I had um, a tree bark. And there, <laughs> ages ago, I took a photo in, in, in Venice of this grand hotel. You know, and um, so that was my background, and uh, so on. And you can change your background if you don't like it. And um, the, you see the little um, film at the end, that's the, the choosing of your own background. Or I don't much care for their paper selection, but it is there. And also, it has um, a big range of, of, of pre made images which, like children, are useful. And these little, we call them stickers. And each one has its own little um, toolbox. So uh, you have a waste bin and a, a lock, you know, and you can um, uh, manipulate it or, you know, you can drop it to the background if you want or you paint over the top of it or whatever. And that's quite handy. You can manipulate if you want a pre-made image, which, you know, uh, you might uh, Here we have uh, Jackson Pollock, which is, um, a, is a, a popular with some. It's, it's a fun program on, you know, Jackson Pollock, the, the artist who used to put his canvas on the floor and then throw pots of paint all over it. And, uh, you know. and um, in Jackson Pollock, it's this kind of leaky pen uh, thing, and it does splotches and spots. And you can either have it so that it will give you a random color every time you put your pen down, you get a different color with no choice. Or you have five 25 color pre-made palettes, which are quite comprehensive and quite nice. And um, so here, um, unfortunately, Jackson Pollock says very small and it's nearly always blocky, you know. And uh, here you can see on the left-hand side that the, the blocky edges around the eye but I, this is one that I outlined. I uh, if, you, uh, if you remember that I outlined one of the images in the previous hour. And um, you, you see the smooth line, which was done in brushes, but um, in, in, um, in, in, in Jackson Pollock, you, you can't do that. You can, in fact, to a certain extent, smooth your line um, if you do it in Photoshop. You see in the, the two um, central things, it's been smooth, but what I did that, you do it in bicubic resampling, um, uh, and, and if you do it in 10% steps, you know, a little step at a time, and you can slightly smooth out the steppy effect, you know. And um, here we have um, a few things you do. I mean, if you do slow, you get a thick line, fast a thin line, if you hold down your finger, you get a blob, and the longer you hold it down, the bigger blob it gets. And then um, double tap, you, you get a menu. Uh, but the only problem with that is that uh, the, 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 the menu tap um, will, will also cover some spots on the, on the, on the screen. So you, know, you get your menu and a lot of blocks. And um, so uh, there's no. Another thing is you can't undo that. There's no one step undo. So you either jump a lot or paint on top of it. The best thing to do is to hold down your finger with the background color and paint on top of it. So, um, and then here we have, you can in fact put a background in it. You can see the floorboards in my studio room. They're in that abstract. But once you've got it, you've started painting, you can't change it, that's it. And here we have. Uh, and this last one is Life Sketch, which is basically just one brush with whiskers. And it's just one brush and you've got three backgrounds, but it does give some interesting effects. And um, you draw again, you draw fast for a thin line and slow for a thick line. This was drawn on the iPhone 4, but it has no zoom, so it's not terribly easy to use um, on the iPhone. And here you have uh, 
I did one on the, uh, on the left on the iPhone and one on the right on the iPad. You see, you get similar effect. And in fact, an interesting point is that my iPhone 4 has a screen 96 by 640 pixels, which is actually almost as big as the iPad screen in terms of pixels. Anyway, there we are. That's the uh, lady. And, um, so once again, that's the URL if you want to uh, have this as a thank you. And, and I do want to say about the Jackson Pollock app that uh, on Friday I spent an hour in the Museum of Modern Art with an excellent abstract expression of show trying to draw Jackson Pollocks with the Pollock app. It's not really possible. <laughs> But it was fun. <laughs> uh, does anyone have questions about anything? We have one minute until lunch. Oh dear. Yeah. What were some of your favorites out of the 20 that you thought you liked the best? Uh, the, <coughs> um, the, the ones that I draw with most are Quill, Inspire, Wasabi, and Zen Brushes. How about you? Uh, Oh, type drawing, sorry. I like Inspire as well, actually. The only thing is, it hasn't got layers, well, it hasn't got the whole time I look. But um, I, I, li I like, um, I do use the effects one a lot, you know, the effects studio. And, um, I one of the bigger programs, you know, by combining layers, but it's easier to use these as a simple um, yes. So, um, um, yes, I think really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Um, because uh, you are both artists, so you decided on like, a traditional art venue. So I wonder if you recommend people without our background to start with this well, I haven't got an art background. In fact, I, I was an advertising copywriter. Uh, oh, I okay. really. And so, uh, <laughs> I guess it depends what you're wanting to do, but I would probably pick something that you feel is easy for you, for you to use and maybe just one application and draw with it. And if you get frustrated with it or if there's something that it's not doing for you, then look around for something else that will help you to do that. I mean, I wouldn't say you need to get all these apps and swim in all these different effects. I mean, it's just, for me personally, it's something I've always liked to do is figure out what kind of mark I can make with any art material. And so it made sense for me to work with a lot of different apps. But many of the artists here today, it's like they use Sketchbook Mobile or they use brushes and, you know, that's it. They're very happy and they make incredible a diverse body of work using just that tool. So it really depends in a way on your own temperament. You know, I, I draw with beet juice. I mean, I'm just always interested in what kind of mark can I make and how can I make something conform to the vision that I have for my own artwork. Yeah, um, I just want to add one thing because a lot of the applications they have really like nice fancy effects. So <coughs> I feel this might just um, make a trend for a lot of beginners, like people getting into abstract drawing mm. instead of like a, in a more traditional way, you start with sketches. So let me just like uh, skip the traditional kind of training and just start with abstract drawing. Right, well, I don't know if we have time, but I sort of have a rant about this, which is it sort of depends what your goal is for yourself. Is your goal to learn how to draw from observation as well as you can? Well then, you can use any tool, a pencil or a digital device, but you don't want to be initially tracing and making effects. You want to be looking at something and trying to draw it. And in this case, I think we actually have a lot of advantages with a digital device because we can work so quickly, because we can erase cleanly, because we can undo. You can make a lot of images faster, 
and therefore your turnaround time for learning how to draw is faster. Uh, if your goal is just to make interesting artwork and you don't really care about this particular skill, which may be outdated and arcane anyway, if you look around at the contemporary famous artists who are in galleries, some of them have texts on digital display. Some of them are, you know, using animal excrement to make paintings. I mean, the ability to draw something really beautifully is not really the thing that gets you into galleries. So in a way, you just have to look for yourself at what your own personal goals are and then figure out what the path to doing that is. And I, I could say that if you want to go into a traditional art, it's very easy digitally to do like the, uh, the, the artist's touch, you know, to, to, to trace a photo and clone it. And you learn an awful lot about modeling and, and, and the drawing. You look lifelike, you know, a traditional art. You both have very beautiful Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Eat, be free. <laughs>